As you can see on this slide, you have brand new vocabulary words this week, so make sure you are creating your flashcards. Remember, you can do them on index cards or paper, or you can do them on Quizlet online. This week's lessons are all about soil. You can read the definition of soil right there, and you can read about the components of soil down here. Soil horizons. There's lots of different types of soil, and every type of soil has its own characteristics. If you dig deep down into any type of soil, you'll see that it's made of layers. We call these layers horizons. When we put all the horizons or the layers together, we get a soil's profile. It takes thousands and thousands of years for soil um, to mature, but the more mature the soil is, the more horizons you can find. The first horizon is horizon O, or the organic layer. This layer has a high percentage of organic material. It includes leaf litter, fungi, microorganisms, plants, and decaying animals. On your paper, there is a blue arrow. Well, it's not blue. You're gonna color it blue. So you're gonna color that arrow blue that says zone of leaching. Now we're not talking about leeches that like suck your blood, but the zone of leaching is what happens when water starts to permeate and drip down through the soil. And as it does, it starts to remove some of the nutrients and it takes those nutrients down with it. The next horizon is horizon A. We would call this topsoil. Topsoil is dark in color and rich in nutrients. It's a great place for plants to grow and for animals to live. Underneath the topsoil, we have another arrow pointing down. This arrow is going to be colored red, and it is the zone of accumulation. So the first arrow, the zone of leaching, was taking nutrients out of the soil through the water. The zone of accumulation is where those nutrients start to gather and build up as water continues to move through. The next horizon is horizon E. Horizon E isn't found in all soils. Um, it's usually found in soils that are much older or soils that are in the forest. Moving downward, we find horizon B, which we call the subsoil. You can color this one orange. The subsoil is full of minerals that have been leached down. You can see that area or that zone of accumulation is pointing right here, which means it's accumulating all of those minerals that have been pulled down by the water through the soil. Horizon C is the parent material. This is from the Earth's surface and what the soil actually developed from. Last but not least, we have horizon R, or the bedrock. The bedrock can be two different types, either weathered bedrock or unweathered bedrock. Read about them here. Now that we've moved down through all of the horizons, let's talk a little bit about permeability. Permeability is the capacity of a rock or soil layer to transmit water or other fluids. The higher the porosity, the higher the permeability, which means the more space between the particles, the more water that will filter through. Look at these four pictures on the slide. You have gravel, sand, silt, and clay, and you can see that when the particles are bigger, there's more space between them. Those 
those spaces between the particles are called pores or porosity. The more space you have, the more water that can fit through. So the last section of your worksheet says to color the soil, I can't read it, it's really little, component that would allow the most water to pass through. So the, the, the soil particles that would allow the most water would be the particles that have the most porosity. So the large particles would have big spaces in between them. So as you can see on this picture, the largest particles are sand, so you should color the sand green. Well, that's it for today, guys. I hope you guys are doing great. I miss you so much, and I wish we could be doing experiments with soil in our classroom. It would be a lot more fun. But anyways, have a great day. Know that I miss you, and I love you, but I got to go.